Today we have Bill Iliff with Iliff Trucks. Bill, um, give us a quick background on your skating. So I've been skating since the 70s and uh, started when I was 10, 1975. Just kind of cruising through the neighborhood, having fun with all my friends. It was a great way of transportation back then. But then, you know, Skateboarding Magazine was out and then the Z-Boys, that was a big influence on everybody. Even though I was growing up in North Carolina, uh, we were still touched by it and affected by it. We started building quarter pipes and it really just went from there. I built my first half pipe in one of my best friend's backyard in 1980. And like a lot of kids did, we got the, uh, you know, the plans right out of Thrasher Magazine when it was on like newspaper quality stock paper, not like the front lit glossy you know paper that it is now if they even are still even making a magazine but humble beginnings all started right there in North Carolina you know like a lot of people we were surfers and really enjoyed skating but I'm the opposite I was a skater that got into surfing later and uh, I think uh, they kind of go hand in hand but I always considered myself more of a skater than a surfer but even though living in a place where, you know, we had pretty fun waves during certain times during the year, it was always a blast. But we had a great skate park uh, really close to where I grew up. Nice. And it was really cool because it was, it was tucked in the woods. And it was basically just a couple of really cool snake runs all connected together. <clears throat> and it literally just kind of weaved through, you know, the pine, the pine trees in, in eastern North Carolina. It was called Swenson Skate Park. And we all honed our skills back there, but man, I learned how to frontside carve, backside carve, apparently so, speed, <laughs> and uh, you know, and that parlayed really well into my surfing. Well, kind of a long story short, all that said, got out of high school, went to college, got an electrical engineering degree, went to work for Intel, and uh, was fortunate enough to have them put me back through school, and I got a master's in mechanical engineering. And I always wanted to make a really cool truck, something that was functional, that turned better than anything that I had ever ridden before. And I'd ridden Tracker, I'd ridden Independent, but uh, I really wanted to take it to the next level. I wanted it to be structurally sound, uh, look great, but I also wanted it to have a real good turning radius and a turning function. So uh, one of the main things that I've done that I've done that the patent is actually pending for is I designed in uh, what's called negative rake into this thing and no other traditional kingpin truck has rake built into it. Okay so you kind of jumped ahead about what motivated you to create your own truck so tell us oh, more okay. about the, tell us more about this the rake and what makes these unique compared to like Indies or Crux or yeah. the others. So what makes these unique compared to an independent or a Crux or an Ace or a Venture or any other sort of truck is primarily it is the rake. And if I kind of hold this up in front of the camera, uh, most traditional, all traditional Kingpin trucks with the exception of this one basically have zero rake. And the way you figure out rake is if you are able to look at the center of your axle nut or the axle there and you have a line drawn straight through where the where the pivot goes through zero rake means that the center of the axle is going to line up through the center of the pivot and I don't know if you can tell with what I'm doing here but my axle sets behind the pivot okay yeah I can see that yeah and that is rake okay and what rake allows you if I flip it around this way rake gives you in a traditional kingpin geometry it gives you this capability which all trucks do but it also gives you this capability. So these ah. are very carvy and very responsive. And if you if you just look through there, the geometry is just perfect. So surfer skaters like us would really dig something like that. Exactly. For the um, the maneuverability, because that's one of the things I love, and I think you love about bull riding is the the flow exactly. and the fluidity. It's just like. Um, surfing and you really need a truck that's, that's gonna gonna respond to that and that's another part of it too the geometry of this uh, along with uh, you know the the bushing setup uh, the pivot cup uh, pivot tube actually in this case not to get too technical but there's big differences between a pivot cup oh no we like technical and a pivot tube uh, pivot tube is going to allow you to kind of front load the uh, the bushing 
And what that's part of what makes this work so well. This is a tube and not a cup. So the way that, that it interacts with the pivot inside this little pocket in here, it never bottoms out. So it's always around the edge of it. Ah. So it, that's part of the response. So this thing is really responsive. And that's what, you know, when you see me skate and you see me taking some of the surf lines and, and I'm like, I'm double pumping up you know, the, yeah. the transition without even getting my front truck up off the, you know, off the concrete. That's because this allows you to stay tight and get real nice, you know, carvy turns out of it. But you can get back to center really quick because, you know, this, the way it's front loaded on the bushings with this tube just really keeps everything um, aligned. So what's, what exact material is the base plate and the hanger made of? <laughs> uh, the base plate and the hanger are both aluminum. Uh, they're 6061. Okay, they're T6061. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So basically, it's aircraft grade aluminum, is what they call it. Super light, super strong. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, very little blemishes in you know the ingot or even the you know the billet that you actually end up making this out of. So this starts off as a block of aluminum, and it's all done on a five-axis CNC machine. So it's completely cut out of a block of aluminum. And uh, the advantages to that, uh, a cast truck has a lot of air pockets in it, and uh, air pockets or voids create uh, basically areas that would tend to break or even stress. Billet is way better because there's, uh, there's no air in there. It's, and there's very little imp in, you know, impurities. In a cast truck, there's all kinds of stuff other than aluminum in there, certain percentages of stuff that need to go in there. But that's kind of the idea is that structurally, this thing is very solid uh, and it's very light. Part of me removing you know, all this material, I did all that in a software tool called SolidWorks and it allows you to run structural analysis. So I can just start doing my design, removing material from this, and then doing force analysis on these trucks, and I can find out when this would break. And as a result, <clears throat> it lets me know how much material I can remove, and uh, that's an end result of, of what this truck is capable of. But even as light as this thing is, and with all the structural analysis that I've done on it, uh, you know, an elephant could step on this thing and it won't break it. It would just bend it and it wouldn't come back to shape. Yeah. It's just a function of aluminum. But, uh, but yeah, to answer your question, it, they're 6061. Uh, the kingpin's a grade eight kingpin, you know. Axle? Have, yep. Uh, the axles actually are a hardened stainless steel. So the 300 series stainless steel hardens. So when this starts out, before it gets hardened, uh, it looks like a, like a butter knife real pretty shiny stainless steel but then it goes through the hardening process and uh, it turns into this I think it's a beautiful almost kind of like a coppery brass color but these things are just super strong it almost be a shame to grind those puppies they're so beautiful you know, that's, that's part of it but thing, that's but, what it's uh, there for yeah, um, um, so what what uh, give us a quick down run down the sizes again so I have uh, you know all the traditional sizes 139 149 millimeter 159 millimeter and 169 millimeter these are 149 millimeter, and these weigh uh, completely populated, like you see them now, 11.8 ounces. It's the lightest truck on the market. Yes, they are so light. And uh, yeah, I think other notable things, uh, when I designed this, one of my biggest gripes as a skater over the years from all the grinding that we do, doing slappies, curbs, street skating, you know, vert, and I've done it all, man, pool, uh, you know, parks, uh, it sucks when you've completely ground your trucks down and you can't even swap your bushings out because you can't get a skate tool in here. With, with an ILEC truck, you are never going to have to worry about being able to get a skate tool in that pocket. you got plenty of room yeah. to grind away and exactly. still get to your kingpin. That, okay, yeah. so nice, that, nice. This base plate was, was really designed uh, very cleverly around that too with uh, being able to get a skate tool coming straight down to be able to always get your hardware off. So there was a lot of thought that went into this. The base plate, out of all the R&D that I've done, has just been rock solid. It hasn't changed one single bit. Nice. Uh, the hanger, I had to change up a, a few little areas here and there, but uh, the axles have been, uh, for the most part, solid. Not to say that I haven't had uh, some of my team riders actually snap a couple of them. But uh, yeah, they've been they've been great. Uh, what I do to get the different hanger 
width is I have different hanger widths or lengths and then this shoulder changes determining whether you need a 139 you know inch hanger uh -huh. or a one you know 59 and then I have another hanger size that will give you like the 149 and the 169 length. so if you had the right equipment you could almost do it yourself you can yeah, yeah. Um, all I do when I uh, when I screw these in um, I use Loctite you know just on uh -huh. on both thread sizes I mean and just screw it right in and let it dry for uh, 24 hours and yeah this, these things uh, I'm not gonna say they never come out they do but you have to use a torch yeah uh, or a heat gun to, to get them out but they will come out well, you gotta really and trucks it take a ton of abuse of yeah. course so what do you expect but and they also make a great sound hitting the coping we all love that sound yeah. of the trucks hitting the coping and today I could hear it all the way across the bowl awesome. when James was banging I was <laughs> like yeah that's great that is great Okay, so killer. Um, so you, you, you kind of get around. You kind of seem to go from Maui to North Carolina and then take tr trips. Is this part of your product testing, hitting up all the different parks and yeah, all the different people? And Yeah, it's a big part of it. I, I was blessed to have lived on Maui for five years, and um, I started this company up over there. I was born over there, so it was a great place for me to kind of come back to my roots and start this whole thing up. And had a really successful run in the downhill racing scene and that's still going. I have some great team riders that are still competing today as we speak. They're in Europe and they're killing it. Okay, you, you seem to like know my question. So that's what I was getting on to is um, tell me about your race team. Yeah. This so, sounds pretty exciting. I've been following you on Instagram. They seem to be doing killing it, man. Yeah, I have, uh, I got great team riders and they're all at different levels and they're, uh, you know, they, they're, they're progressing at different levels. But I have, uh, just a small handful of riders now. I started off big, you know, you start floating people gear and some people work out, some people don't. A lot of real talented kids get into it and then, you know, they get other interests. Uh, what I've realized, especially with the younger kids that are 14, 15, that were really getting into, you know, downhill racing, even on Maui, guess what happens? They get their driver's licenses and they all discover girls and uh, they quit skating. Yeah. And that's happened a lot. It's happened with the traditional kingpin trucks as well. I've seen it happen. But uh, uh, but I have a crew probably of about six or seven people that I could name that are still... Doing. Nice. You want to give a shout out to any of your riders oh, at all? I'd love yeah. to. I mean... Yeah. There's uh, uh, Zach Mills Goodwin right now from Australia is killing it. He's in Europe. Um, and out of uh, you know 200 riders, uh, Zach is in the top you know 10%. You know, he's, he's doing phenomenal. Uh, he's super lovable. Everyone loves him on the tour. What kind of, what size does he prefer? Zach is, is he going riding, for the 169s? No, well, he's riding uh, my reverse kingpin downhill racing trucks. Okay. Uh, his width, I think, is probably, I think he's riding 180s. Okay. Maybe one. So that's maybe close to 10 inch maybe, maybe 170, axle? Yeah, maybe 170 millimeters okay. is what he's riding. Uh, 46 degree base plate. That's that's key. Low profile. It's yeah. What it is, it's um. Fifty is a good fifty degree base plate for a reverse kingpin truck is a real good kind of when you start getting into you know going fast and learning how to carve and learning how to slide. A fifty degree truck is a real good kind of entry level. Now forty six is only just a four degrees off from a from a fifty. Obviously, you know the math is easy, but makes a big difference what it does it's it makes it super divey through the corners with a little bit different degree what Zach does is he wedges his trucks so he even gets you know a, a harder or lower degree and what with that his does, risers I yeah think, exactly yeah. with his wedge you know angled risers and stuff so um, I'm actually working on uh, offering some lower degree trucks for specific team riders but you know that's Zach we have another Australian team rider named Jack Bain, who's just, he has been the, like the backbone of the guy that's helped me out from the beginning. I met uh, Jack on Maui, uh, even though he was an Australian kid, he was over there, you know, just visiting and hanging out. And, you know, we kind of all met around the same time. This was circa probably 2012. Uh, he's just been a phenomenal part of this whole company. Uh, and then my other two, uh, three main riders out there for uh, one of them is Josh Weisfeld. Josh got involved heavily uh, early on when he and I first met 
uh, but he started shaping boards, surfboards, and his business took off, so he's been focusing on that. But uh, my other guys are Dakota Camp, uh, who lives on Maui, and he is just phenomenal. Right on, right on. And uh, yeah, <coughs> it's just, uh, it, it's amazing the support, you know, that I have coming out of, you know, out of, out of Maui. Yeah. It's such, I mean, it, the tie-in with surf and skate goes so far back, and it's just so strong to this day, and it's such a, we all know, it's such a great community. It's just a way, it's, it's, it's a way of life, not because it's fucking cool and everything, think that it's just so much fun and the people involved are really cool you know and they everybody yeah. works together and um back to the technological aspect um i think most people just kind of throw their gear together and go skate but they don't realize that there has been technology improvements over the year that really has brought skating around and i can attest to that back when i was riding clay wheels and flat boards yeah, without exactly. any concave you know yeah and uh, that's a great a great point, Ward, and I, I think what I'd like to add about, you know, what you get with a, you know, a precision truck is these bushing seats are, they're perfect. This, this bushing, when this, when you put a, an Islip truck together, it goes together like a gun. If you've ever taken a gun apart and, or put something, anything that has a lot of mechanical precision in it, mm -hmm. everything just click, pop, snap, everything just snaps together perfectly. And there's no mechanical play or slop in anywhere in this thing. Like a Mercedes, dude. Yeah. Everything fits together perfectly. Exactly. And you know what? It's not over-engineered. The other trucks are under-engineered. Exactly. Don't and that's, think? I think that's a big thing. I can guarantee you, not to sound you know cocky or arrogant, but um, what I'm doing, I'm the only company out there on the planet that actually has a real engineer, engineering trucks, not just taking what was there and maybe making little refinements to it but you know this whole thing was designed uh, you know in a, in a CAD system it's been tested it's been tested for a couple years now but it's it's engineered but not only is it engineered but I'm also a skater and yeah. I skate and I skate every day and do oh, that's a huge part of it obviously yeah, I mean exactly. I mean I know what works and what doesn't work you know and it's uh, it's very rewarding I bet but, I bet yeah, more, I got a, I got a shout out. More to, power to you. Yeah. One other, uh, one of one other of my Maui riders. His name's Zach Newman. Okay. And uh, he's a Pacific Northwest boy. He's from Washington State. Right on, killer, killer. But he, uh, I met Zach quite a few years ago on Maui, and he's just been a staple with his company, along with Dakota. Those two guys are best friends, and they shred. And another uh, worthy mention out there, a couple more other Maui guys, Jonathan Valenzuela. He rides for Riptide, who makes all my bushings, okay. my pivot cups, cool. and my pivot tubes. Um, yeah, just so many, and there's just a ton of kids. One of one of my all-time favorite, I, I still refer to him as a kid, because I, mean, I started skating with this kid when he was I think 15 or 16. His name's Matt Quarter. We call him Matt Chu. And uh, he's just a rad Hawaiian kid. And he's, he's amazing. And he loves skateboarding. He loves island trucks. He goes fast. And uh, yeah, it's just been, it's been a blast, man. Just ha being influenced by these kids that were just born and raised and just grew up skating on Haleakala Crater. And it's just phenomenal. What a great environment it yeah. is, you know? And, and um, you know, and the best thing Bill is, is you're doing what you want to do with your life and that's I have more power to you there dude that's just awesome and you're gonna leave your mark on skating which is totally killer and I can't wait to get a pair of those on my awesome. new Pete's pig <laughs> yeah and I'm gonna leave with one last little question what's your favorite skate park my favorite skate park um, I've got a few of them but uh, the North Houston Park okay in Houston Texas it's huge it's that 80,000 square foot you know, right on. amazing one it's got 80,000 yeah square it's got feet. a combination Jeez. bowl and when you look at it from a top view it's shaped like Texas hello they love <laughs> themselves out there but All that right. park is awesome uh, and, and honestly uh, Gabriel Park right here in Portland right down the street from it's a my fun brother one. Ward's it's a fun one house, man. man I it's love that great. park uh, just discovered it just a couple years ago probably when you and I met I was traveling out here with one of my best friends Joss Weif, Weisfeld, Weisfeld. And uh, we got turned on to that park, and every time I come out here, man, I go there. I love it. Sweet. Now, surf spot. Yeah. Favorite surf spot? Uh, 
Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Right nice. Right I was hoping it'd be yeah. one from North Carolina. I've never yeah. surfed there, but I can't wait to yeah. get out there so and do a little of that. Yeah. You know. And also Shackerford Banks, which is kind of closer to uh, to my zone, and that place used to go off crazy. And uh, Emerald Isle, which is you know where I hail from, and yeah, it's a great little surf spot. The Point, all my boys. Right on. Bit Bogulant Pier. Yeah, we got tons of fun. If we're not surfing, we're skating, and if we're not skating, we're surfing. Or you're dead. Yeah. There's only three. Exactly. There's only other alternative. <laughs> well, thank you very much this afternoon, Bill Iliff. Uh, Good Thank to have you, you my man. Love you, man. All right, you, dude. <laughs> Killer. There we go.